Hello everybody, welcome to Social Studies Today. Today we're going to be talking about feudalism, or the social and economic structure of Europe. Now, before we begin, let's look at what our essential question is for today. Our essential question is, what was the social and economic structure of medieval Europe? So, as we relate back to what we are talking about, let's keep that in mind. What was the social and economic structure of medieval Europe? Also, let's take a look at our learning goal for today. Now, our learning goal is the statement, I can describe how feudalism developed in Europe. So as we go through the lesson today, keep in mind that by the end of the lesson, you should be able to describe how feudalism developed in Europe, and you should also understand how that relates to the social and economic structure of medieval Europe. That structure was called feudalism. So today we're going to look at what is feudalism and how did it come about. Well, to start with, let's come up with a definition. And our definition for feudalism is very simple. It's government by land-owning nobles. So what does that actually mean? That means that nobles protected and governed the people in return for service. Those people they were protecting were called peasants. And see, this came about because peasants could not rely on kings for protection anymore. After the fall of Charlemagne's empire, many of the great kingdoms had collapsed and it was landowning nobles who had all the military power. And you'll get a better understanding of that as we get into talking about lords and vassals. So let's look at lords and vassals. Um, to start with, let's talk about what a lord is. A lord is a person that gives a fief, which was usually land, to a vassal in return for military service. So a vassal then is a noble that provided military service in return for that land. So land was very powerful. Land was very important. The more land you had, the more wealth you had. Because then you could give that land away to other people, and in return they would be in your military. And that's how these great armies were made. So the relationship between lords and vassals, something very important for you to remember. A lord gives land to a vassal in return for military service. The vassal provides that military service in return for land, and they both are getting something that they want. So now let's talk about that land, that land that's so important. Well, the land usually on a fief was called a manor, and that manor was made up of workshops, it was made up of the manor house, a lot of times it would become a castle, it had mills, it had fields for farming, and the farming was very important. Now the people who did the farming they were peasants. So you have these peasants and they farmed the land and they did this in exchange for protection. Now peasants fell into two groups. You had your freemen, which were people that basically were like renting land from the owner and then in exchange would give them some crops, kind of pay rent. But then you had serfs and serfs were the most important ones because serfs were bound to the land. They were like property, part of the manor. And they had certain rules they had to follow. They couldn't get married without the permission of the owner. They um, could not move. They could not own land. So they had certain rules they had to follow. They were actually bound to the land. Now with the uh, farming and everything that was going on, you then had improvements in farming. During the Middle Ages, you had this population kept growing, so it was very difficult to keep up with it food-wise. So they made some improvements in farming. One of the big ones was the iron plow, made it easier to dig up through the ground. They had the horse collar, and this was important because before the horse collar, you had to use an ox to plow the field, and that took forever. The horse collar made it a lot faster. And then probably the biggest advancement still used today was the three-field system. Now the three-field system was where you had crops you'd grow in one field, you have some other crops you grew in a different field, and they had left one that was called fallow or unplanted. And every season you changed which one you didn't plant. That way then the nutrients could be returned to the soil and you could grow bigger and better crops. Well, I hope you enjoyed our little discussion on feudalism or the social and economic structure of Europe. And I hope this gives you a better understanding of what we're going to be covering in class today. Thank you and goodbye.